Ladies and gentlemen, after talking about it so much, when is the Switch 2 coming out? When is this thing going to be announced? Is it even real? We are finally entering the era of the Switch 2 reveal and announcements and just the entry to this whole next generation. Today we have some exciting leaks to go over, let's go and get right into it. So normally when I make a video, I like to keep the big news at the end of the video, and then you know in the beginning we talk about some smaller news or some other things I find interesting. Not happening in this video. This is strictly a dedicated Switch 2 video because all these announcements and leaks and rumors are just so damn exciting. So before we get started, if you could hit a like and subscribe, it would truly mean the world to me. And let's just go and get right into the video. So yesterday I covered a leak about the Switch 2 entering mass production. So the company who actually produces these consoles for Nintendos is spending 2 billion yen in parts and another 1 billion yen in manufacturing. So that just lets me know that all signs are pointing to go. So we have a few more leaks to get into today that I think really seal the deal. So one of the major things we want to know about this console, and it's going to be a major selling point, is will this console be backwards compatible? When you look at all the consoles previous to the Switch, a majority of them have been backwards compatible. So why would the Switch not do the same thing? Especially seeing how popular the Switch is. When you've bought all these games for multiple years, and then if Nintendo were to release a new console, and you're like, yeah, you know, you bought all those games, spent probably thousands of dollars over the years, you can't play that on this new console. A majority of us would just say, well, I'll just play my old console until I can justify buying a new console. If there's only around 10 or 15 games at launch, you know, that's probably not enough for me to go out and buy a new console, but if I can bring over my entire old library as well as these new games too, well then yeah, I would be interested in buying a new console. Nate the Hate, the Switch 2 has backwards compatibility support. And that's very straightforward. We don't need to decipher this or anything. So this was the post yesterday that I covered about the Switch being mass produced. And the very top comment is from Nate the Hate. It has backwards compatibility support. That is amazing to see. And when you see people like Nate the Hate and a couple other people we'll mention today start making news and announcements, it's like, okay, they normally don't say anything unless they know or have a very good idea or understanding of what's going on. So seeing that straight at the top makes me very, very happy. You m -m 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 make me happy. I've never been a person who buys a lot of digital games. I like physical games simply because I can buy them, beat them, and then resell them towards games in the future. But I've been making a lot of eShop videos almost every single week, and there's been so many amazing deals on the eShop that even myself, I've been buying games to put into a quote unquote backlog. I don't know if I'll ever play them, but the prices are so enticing, it's like, man, this game is normally 50 or $60, right now it's 10 bucks. I would be a fool not to buy this. And one of the problems in doing that, at least for myself, is sometimes I second guess everything. I'm like, should I have ever bought this? Am I even gonna have time to play this? Seeing that the Switch 2 is gonna be backwards compatible, it's like, well, I'm sure there'll be a time in the Switch 2 life, hopefully not, but maybe there'll be a time where I just don't have anything to play the same way we've had it with the Switch sometimes, that I can just go hit that backlog and everything will be perfectly fine. So yeah, not a bad start to this video. So we also have this right here. Christopher Dring, GameIndustry.biz. Industry whispers around something Switch 2 related happening this month. So there's really not a lot to take away from this right here. I just thought I would add this because, you know, we have all these other rumors and leaks. This is just something to add to it. But we have even more. Andy Robinson from VGC confirms about press heard about a Switch 2 reveal this month but he wouldn't bet his house on it in case plans change to avoid getting burned. It feels so weird to finally be in this moment. I've mentioned it before, but we've been talking about a Switch 2 or a Switch Pro since 2020. Now, I would argue that the Switch OLED technically is a Switch Pro. You really do see a huge difference. But now that this point is almost here, it feels almost like we're dreaming. And I know maybe if somebody were watching this video who weren't into gaming the way we were, or fans of Nintendo the way we were, that would sound delusional. Um, and maybe it is a little bit, but I just love gaming. I appreciate what it's done for me and the escape it gives all of us, how happy it makes all of us, and I'm just so excited for this moment. I said it before, but the Switch really changed my life. It gave me this platform. Even though I am a small YouTuber, as long as I keep going, this channel will continue to grow. But one day I had an extra $240 and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go to a pawn shop next door. And I walked over there with no intentions, Went inside, found the Switch for $250, and I said, would you take $240 cash? They accepted it. I went home and the rest was history. And that was in like the middle of 2018 because I couldn't afford a Switch when it launched. Ever since then, I've been playing it and sharing my love with the rest of the community. 
and it's just such a cool feeling. I really love the Switch and respect it. But we have to be honest here, it really does lack in so many areas, and there's so many different ways they can improve this console. If they just fix the bare minimum, the Switch 2 will be amazing, but we know Nintendo likes to go above and beyond. Now sometimes that hurts them in the long run, and I'm not saying that's going to happen here, but sometimes they get a little too wacky or go a little too outside the box. But as long as they just make a better version of the Switch, then we will be good to go. So the two things I care about the most is third party support. I would really love to see some other games on Nintendo consoles that just couldn't run on the Switch. And I'm very, very curious about the price point. If you would have asked me like two years ago, I would have said, yeah, it's probably gonna be like 400 bucks or something. But we see PlayStation raising the price in Japan, probably because of Concord, but the yen isn't doing so well. So since the price of the PS5 is getting raised, Maybe the next generation of Nintendo consoles will also be pretty expensive. And when you look at all these handheld gaming PC consoles, a lot of those are like $700 plus. Now I think the Steam Deck, the base model might be around $500, and it's rumored the Switch 2 will be just a little less powerful than the Steam Deck. So if that's the case, maybe max this thing will be $500. But even if this console was $500, that would definitely turn a lot of people off to it. For this thing to be successful right out of the gate, we need a couple things. We need big, third party support, big new first party games. We need to see an improvement in graphics that are big enough to actually see with your eyes. Like, I don't wanna have to be like, is that better looking? Eh, I guess it is. I would like to be able to see it right away. And that price needs to be right in a sweet spot. It needs to be expensive enough that Nintendo can make a return on their investment right away, but it also needs to be enticing to the casual gamer. The diehard gamer, you know, people who are buying these PC handhelds, well, they're gonna buy whatever the hell they want because they really understand it and they enjoy it. But in my opinion, I bet a lot of gaming revenue comes from people who are casual gamers. People who just buy stuff because it's trending or because it's cool or because their friends have it, play it a few times, and just set it on the shelf and forget about it for years. That's legit why the Nintendo Wii was so popular, because everybody had one, so everybody else wanted one. And a lot of people played them and just set it up for years. So the Switch 2 price really needs to appeal to the casual gamers as well as the diehard gamers. But ladies and gentlemen, what do you think of all this information? It is so weird we are finally at this point. We had those weird Nintendo Directs at the tail end of August, and I was like, well, if they're doing that, what the hell is happening in September? Well, we might actually know now. So down below, let me know your thoughts and opinions. If you could, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'd really appreciate a follow. And you guys know me. I'll see you soon with a new video. Peace out.